What's up, everybody? I am J.D. Oldenburg. I am an author. I am a self-publisher. And if you are watching this video, you are likely an author too. Or you are on your journey to becoming one. Today, I want to share four mistakes you can easily avoid off the bat that will save you a ton of money and get you in your route to self-publish children books or comic book glory. Let's get to it. Number one, know who your book is for. I cannot stretch this enough. Know your audience, know your audience, know your audience. I've seen so many artists dive into a project because they like it, because they think the subject is cool. I am guilty of this myself. This is not to say that you can't innovate or bend genres. You can do what you want as long as you know it is what you're doing. Know who your story is going to be for. You can go to a bookstore, find people who are doing what you want to do successfully, study them, change it up a bit, put it out, give it your twist, and boom, new book. Uh -huh. I had this teacher who would always say, you have to know the rules before you can break them, and uh, I agree. Number two, it is um, not knowing your dimensions. You know, if you're gonna be a self-published author, you have to embody your vision. You have to be more than just a writer. And if you decide to do print on demand, there's going to be specific dimensions that they will take or not take, and you have to make sure that you know them. You don't want to, it's gonna be a very sad wall when you show up on KDP and you try to upload your book and you're like, oh shit, we can't do those dimensions. So on that note, here are the dimensions. I will also upload them on the description below, along with soon a full explanatory video on using KDP. For now, if you are doing print on demand, again, choose your dimensions so that your artists can go to business without surprises. On that note, I am going to go to number three. I, did I do number two? Yes. Number three, having not having a clear vision and expecting your artist to have one. This is a big mistake, people, and it will cost you time, it will cost you money because I wish someone had told me before I started seeking an artist for Horatio in the Wind. It took me almost four years. It took me almost four years to get this book done for that very reason, a lack of a clear vision. You can't just hand a manuscript to an artist and expect them to come up with your world, unless of course you're okay with them creating it from their imagination and then wanting to partially own it. This didn't work for me and I will tell you a detailed story of that in another video, but right now, the pointer is, Go to a bookstore, explore the books you like, find the dimensions, find the style, and then yes, draw. Put to the best of your ability, envision all that you can, storyboard, place each page on paper, have your vision translated to paper, have visual references, do all that you can to help your artists understand, they're not mind readers. I'll post another video on best practices to choose and keep your artists soon, but for now I want to quickly show you what I mean by storyboarding. This is my storyboard. And this is my final artist piece. As you can see clearly, artistically, I'm not very good at drawing, but I can draw some perspective. So when it came to the placement of things in my illustrations, I was like spot on. I knew exactly where I wanted. And you can get as close to this as you can. Try, if you don't wanna draw, then at least have visual references. But I definitely recommend drawing because it's not about it being ugly or not. It's about a clear idea for your artist to go off of. And uh, um, before hitting it off with my artist for Horatio, I went through not one or two, but three artists failed because of my lack of a clear vision and the expectation of just giving some text to an artist and expecting them to come up with a book without wanting to own it. So on that note, I wanna go to number four, which is not having an organized budget. People, uh, there is a famous triangle rule. It is uh, cheap, good, and fast. You can only get two at a time. So if it's cheap and good, won't be fast. If it's good and fast, won't be cheap. And if it's fast and cheap, yeah, sure, sure, it won't be good. <laughs> uh, let's be realistic here. Uh, artists uh, are people who have to eat. And if you want a book that looks like money, you have to invest money in it. Please be aware of this. Uh, if you're not your only illustrator, like this or the, yeah, these are people, these are artists, I gotta eat. So, you know, don't expect a $600 page. Don't pay five, don't pay $50 and expect a $600 result. You know what I mean? Like you, I, I, I sort of had to go through the struggle of like how much do I want to invest in this 
in this in this project but anyway that's another video what i want to say is that when you do work for hire definitely pay on a per page basis don't go giving in like a whole advance for like say like the whole book in sketches because this is a mistake i made and it was a massive massive headache I want to keep this video short and to the point, so if you want to learn more about taking a book from concept art to final printed product, like this baby. Uh, don't forget to follow, subscribe, hit that like button, and uh, I'm JD Oldenburg, this is Horatio in the Wind, and I will see you next time. Children's book author and I am... Uh,